In the last video, we mentioned that when an atom has unequal numbers of electrons and protons, it has a charge, and then we call it an ion. In this video, we're going to look at how you name these ions, why various ions have the charges that they do, and also look at some more complex ions that are made of several atoms joined together. First of all, a bit of vocabulary. If an ion is just a single atom, we call it a monatomic ion. This comes with the suffix mono, meaning one. And if it's made from more than one atom joined together, we call it a polyatomic ion, because poly means many. And as you know, the key feature of an ion is that it has a charge. It can be either positive or negative. If the ion has a positive, positive charge, then we call it a cation. And if it has a negative charge, we call it an anion. First, let's look at simple monatomic ions. Monatomic means made of one atom, so a monatomic ion is simply an atom that has either lost some electrons and become a positively charged cation, or it's gained some electrons and become a negatively charged anion. So here's our periodic table, and I'm going to shade the elements that usually form positive ions in blue. And this corresponds to the metals as well as hydrogen. Hydrogen can also form positive ions. Uh, and I'm going to shade those that usually form negative ions in orange. This corresponds to the non-metals. And also hydrogen. It's rare, but hydrogen is able to form a negative ion. Uh, the white ones that are left over on the right-hand side, the noble gases, they rarely form ions at all. I'm going to talk about those later. For our purposes here, what you need to know is this. If a monatomic ion is positively charged, then its name is the same as the neutral atom. This usually happens with metal atoms, so when a sodium atom becomes an ion, we simply call it a sodium ion. And you can have tin ions and uranium ions and iron ions. Hydrogen can also form positive ions, as we've said, and they would just be called hydrogen ions. If instead you have a negatively charged ion, and this usually happens with the non-metal atoms, then you change this end of the name to ide, I-D-E. So the ion made from a nitrogen atom is called a nitride ion. And oxygen becomes oxide, fluorine becomes fluoride, sulfur becomes sulfide, tellurium becomes telluride, and so on. Under certain conditions, hydrogen can also form those negative ions. And in this case, it would be called hydride. All right, for this uh, little part of the video, it will help if you have a periodic table in front of you. So pause the video now and uh, go and grab one. Remember in the last video, we found that we could read the number of valence electrons in atoms by looking at which vertical group the element was in on the periodic table. We can use that same information to work out what kind of ion the element most likes to form. We do this using a rule of thumb called the octet rule. This says that it's energetically favorable for an atom to lose or gain the number of electrons that will give it a full outer shell, so a full valence shell. For instance, sodium has one valence electron. It's in group one. To get a full outer shell, it can either gain seven electrons uh, to make its outer shell up to eight, or it could lose one. Its outer shell would now be the next level down, but that's OK. It would have a full eight electrons. It's less complicated for the atom to lose one than it is to gain seven, so it loses one. And if it loses one electron, it means it now has more, one more proton than electron, which means it has a charge of plus one. So the ion that sodium forms is a plus one charged ion, and we write it Na+. Now look at magnesium. It's in group two, so it has two valence electrons. That means it can either gain six to get a full eight, or it can lose two. Losing two is less complicated, so it does that. That means it now has two more protons than electrons, uh, and that gives it a charge of plus two. And we write that as Mg2+. What about fluorine? It's in group seven, so it has seven valence electrons. It could either gain one or lose seven. Again, we go for the least complicated option, which in this case is to gain one electron. This means that the fluoride ion has one more electron than it has protons, and that gives it a charge of minus one. So we write the fluoride ion as F minus. One final example. Lithium is element number three. It has three electrons and three protons. It can either lose one electron or gain seven to get a full outer shell. Losing one is the easiest option, so it does that. But that leaves it with only two electrons, and this is called the octet rule. 
Well, recall that the innermost electron level can hold only two electrons. We call this the octet rule because it's an easy name uh, and the second and third levels are very stable with eight electrons each. But really, it should be called something like the full electron level rule. The fact that the outer shell of a lithium ion has two rather than eight electrons is okay because that shell can only hold a maximum of two. So the lithium ion has a charge of plus one and we write it LA, Li plus. Some ions are not monatomic like those we've seen, but polyatomic, meaning they're made up of several atoms bonded together. As with monatomic ions, a polyatomic ion has either too many or too few electrons relative to the number of protons in the atoms, so it has a charge. But for now, we don't need to assign the charge to a particular atom. Just think of the charge being spread over the whole polyatomic ion. We also don't need to go into how the atoms are joined together just at the moment. However, you do need to be able to recognize and remember the formulae, the names and the charges of all of these ions. And they're the most common polyatomic ions that you'll encounter. This particular bit of rote learning is going to serve you well all through chemistry, so put in the work now and you'll feel the joy many times later on. Note that for some of the ions, there's a pattern that can help. If the ion ends in 8, A-T-E, like nitrate or chlorate or sulfate, it means that there's oxygen involved. So nitrate is nitrogen and oxygen, NO3 minus. Uh, chlorate is chlorine and oxygen, ClO3 minus. Unfortunately, the A-T-E, the 8, doesn't tell you how many oxygens are involved or what the charge is. That's the bit that you've got to learn. Okay, so this is your task. Uh, it's a fairly simple one. I'd like you to write the name and symbol uh, for the iron formed by each of the elements in question one. And in question two, testing your rote learning, uh, work out the, or write down the formula or the name, whichever is missing for each of these polyatomic ions.